everybody, welcome to another edition of HMF Live. Uh, my name is Tenny Morvik. I am the coach and founder of Hustle to Muscle Fitness. And uh, I use this platform to help others live a happier, healthier, more balanced life. And the reason I do that is because uh, I am a beach body coach and I have been for the past two and a half years. And through using beach body products over the last 10 plus years, um, I've been able to lose and keep off about 75 pounds. So now I use my experience, um, my what knowledge I've learned along the way, um, what to do, what not to do, to help others in their goals of being healthy and happy, whatever that looks like, whether it's gaining weight um, in a healthy way, gaining muscle, losing weight, um, all of that. So uh, just a couple of things. Tonight we are going to be talking about um, what it's like to live with chronic pain and disabilities. Um, and I'm going to bring, you guys have seen Gary before if you've been watching the show for a while. Uh, but if not, I um, mean, you, maybe you're a newer viewer, you've probably heard me talk a little bit about Gary. Uh, and so I am, he's going to come on my show. And if you're brand new, first of all, thanks for watching everybody and welcome. Um, he is my husband. And so we're going to talk a little bit about um, a day in the life um, because he is permanently disabled and we'll, we'll go into more of that. But a couple of announcements for what's going on in Team Hustle Muscle Fitness. We are always busy, so I like to keep you guys updated. Um, we are into the second half of October, which is flipping crazy, if you can believe that. Uh, so right now we've got five day, you're just saying the same thing too. Uh, fall, five day fall food fitness challenge is going on right now. And we are in the second half of the fall into fitness challenge. So the next thing coming up is going to be the November challenge, which is the get your gym sweats, not your meat sweats challenge. Uh, and that'll be happening uh, near the beginning of the month. And if you'd like to uh, join us for that, maybe avoid gaining weight during the holidays, um, then I would suggest getting a hold of me and I can answer all your questions about that. Uh, it's a lot of fun and you get to win prizes along the way. So um, the other thing is in about a week, I'll be doing a coach sneak peek. So a behind the scenes opportunity of what this coaching thing is all about, why we love it, what we do, ask questions, and it's a way for you to get information without having to necessarily become a coach. So if you'd like more information on either of those things, uh, either comment after this video or uh, send me a message and I will be happy to answer those questions for you. So um, we're going to let Gary get his started uh, and we're going to get into some Q&A with him. Hey everybody, it's me again. Of course, you guys know. Anyways, uh, if you guys hadn't already noticed, or haven't already known that uh, yesterday, I kind of started a new kind of, uh, maybe it's a journey diary log or something like that. Hi, Hustle the Muscle. Uh, <laughs> so, but today I'm actually gonna be live on here and I'm also gonna be live on my wife's show, uh, Hustle the Muscle Fitness. And um, anyways, we're gonna talk. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit more. We're gonna continue uh, continue the um, the discussion from yesterday a little bit. We're gonna do a combo show, kind of, and bring it together. So, uh, hello everybody. And so, I guess hello. This is my wife Tanya. If people don't already know uh, who she is, Let's see if I can get the camera to look a little bit more towards her. Um, but anyways, we'll figure it out. yeah. And if you guys don't already know her, this is my wife Tanya. So, uh, anyways, hello Gary's followers. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> uh, if you would like to uh, go ahead and whatever we're gonna do. Okay. So, um, for those of you on Gary's page, uh, just kind of bring you up to speed. We are. So I do a health and fitness show, a broadcast every week, and so this week we're talking about uh, living with chronic pain and disabilities, and so. Um, I guess to give HMF Live some background um, without going into the very long detail, like in a nutshell, why are you considered disabled? Uh, because I've had nine reconstructive surgeries on my body because of my back and my shoulder, my arm, uh, and mainly that's it. The frame's falling apart. And kind how, of destroyed a frame. Okay, and how old are you? I'm 41. And how long have you been uh, living in this condition? Since I was about 17. So what happened at 17 that said, okay, now I have, mm -hmm. I am living with disabilities? Um, probably about the time, like when my back started giving me a hard time, uh, and when I dislocated my shoulder, 
probably when I was, you know, 17. Um, I dislocated my shoulder pretty bad and it, it pretty well, you know, it, it messed me up for a while. Of course, when you're young, you bounce back. But unfortunately, I didn't really bounce back. So two years later, I ended up having to actually have my shoulder pinned back. Uh, they had to anchor my, my shoulder onto my, my arm. You can see a scar here. But they had to cut me all the way under and throw some pins in there. And then my doctor said that, uh, you know, you're pretty much only going to get about 70% use of your arm back. I don't know what it's at now. but um, So it was actually his recommendation that like you know you may you may need assistance at the time i was on ssi so that way i could still work and not have to rely on disability okay and at what point um did you did, i guess did the chronic pain set in that was 23. uh when i was 23 i had my first back surgery um and that pretty much started the downward spiral um because once they messed up my back, or once I messed up my back and they tried fixing it, um, it actually got worse. So, you know, it uh, it wasn't any better. Uh, I tried, but it it didn't it didn't help. And then you know, of course, right after that, then it, you know, it was surgery, 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 surgery on other parts of my body. Okay, and so maybe not necessarily the legal definition, but from your experience, how would you define chronic pain? Uh, anything that is, it, it, it's debilitating, uh, or it ruin or it interrupts your life. Um, it, for example, last night we went to Hailstorm and to, uh, Lita Ford and I wasn't able to stay for the rest of the concert. I had to leave. I couldn't stand anymore. Um, my legs just wouldn't do it. My hips were hurting and, you know, and of course it's not just the chronic pain. A lot of people think it's just your body pain but what people don't realize is is once you get into that chronic pain then depression starts to set in and you know then you start to think less of yourself okay so and i'm gonna pause you so, before you get no, into that because we'll okay. get into that that's a, a separate strand but um okay so would you say like with chronic pain is it constant pain or is it just uh, so severe at times that it's debilitating or is it just i live in pain all the time I personally live in pain all the time. It's just it's just part of my life. So do you live in that severe life no. interrupted pain all no. the time? No. No. There are there, you know there's moments of levity. There's moments of times where you know I can do more things than I would normally do. Of course, there's a bad side to that because when I do feel better, then I do more stuff and then it throws me down even harder. So it's kind of this double-edged sword. You know, it's actually a triple-edged sword because you know you you're told to get out and do things, and then when you do, it throws you down. And then you have to wait and recover and do it again. And that's just kind of how your life is. You just kind of, you know. Um, I saw somebody on Facebook the other day that had said, you know, they, they had gotten a message from somebody who said, well, you know, you're disabled. How can you get out and, you know, you said you went out last night. Well, we're not dead, <laughs> you know. We're just in chronic pain. We have those moments of levity. And we utilize them. We take it full advantage of them. And then, you know, I call it the Superman syndrome. You know, you end up feeling like Superman. And then the next day, you feel like you were set on fire and put out the crowbar. <laughs> uh, so Angie and Johnny want to know, how did you hurt your back? Uh, I, the, the first time I hurt my back was when I was working on... I was working while I was getting my GED and I was pulling on some blackberry vines and one of them wasn't coming out so I let it go and grabbed it again so I could get a better grip on it and when I pulled on it whatever it had it must have let go and I spun and my upper body spun and it it ruptured my L4 or L5 S1 disc and then I waited a while and thought I could work through it and uh it just, you know, the disc ruptured. The, the disc ruptured, and then I ended up having to go into. I was supposed to have surgery, you know, like in May, and my disc ruptured, and I ended up having to have surgery in, you know, like April. You know, they had to move it up. And the second one was a result of just wear and tear from the, the first. Yes, one. the second, the second back surgery was due to the first one because it held it static. So since. 
there was no movement in the L4, L5 disc that it just ultimately it ultimately ruptured. Uh, uh, again, but the one other thing, I, you know, uh, however, the one thing I didn't put in was that I already have disc issues. I have, you know, what they call advanced degenerative disc disorder. It's just a fancy way of saying that I have weak discs in my back. So, you know, that's what ends up happening. Okay, so getting back to the chronic pain, would you say that that looks the same for everyone who suffers from oh, chronic pain? Oh, absolutely not. Absolutely not. It looks different. It, there, it's, it's as different as DNA. Each person, it's individual. Because, you know, uh, you ever see somebody pull into a, you know, a disabled parking spot and, you know, they get out and they walk into the store and you're like, how the hell are you disabled? Well, that's be, that's one of those things. You don't know what his disability is or her disability is. And it's a judgment, you know. Thank you. He's getting comments on his, yeah. just so you know. Um, okay, so what, we'll, we'll focus on the chronic pain right now. So what um, would you say, aside from obviously living in pain, what would you say is maybe one of the biggest obstacles, uh, challenges, you know what I mean, that you face when dealing with chronic pain and medical issues? Other people's judgment, plain and simple. Okay, tell me more. Uh, because everybody thinks that they're a doctor and everybody thinks that because you don't, see I don't, I mean if you look at me, I don't have a cast on me, I don't have, you know, I don't wear a brace, I don't wear anything that shows my disability. So it's just assumed that I don't have a disability. And then when I tell people that I do, they look, they give you that look up and down, they give you the elevator eyes and they're trying to find a visual representation of why you're in chronic pain. Well, you know what, my skin's not translucent so you can't see inside my back. You don't know that while I'm standing here talking to you, there are fire nerve shocks running down my legs or running up my back or my shoulder starts hurting for some freakish reason just because I moved it wrong or somebody else who's, you know, they we hide it. And then the reason why we hide it is honestly because of other people. Uh, it's it it carries a it carries a level of shame that's unwarranted, and so yes, the hardest thing to get over is other people's judgment. It just absolutely is. So I've I've often heard of chronic pain chronic pain referred to as the invisible disability. So that being said, I mean people with limited knowledge are prone or tend to believe what they think they see or believe or whatever. How has your experience been in the medical community? Uh, that's, that's another thing too, is you got to find a doctor that'll believe you that you're in pain. Pain is plain. Pain is relative. You know, pain is, it is, it's invisible. I can't, I mean, I can tell you that I'm in pain all day long, but like, really, can you see it? Well, no, you can't, you can't see pain. You know, it just, you know, you've got to. One, you've got to jump over the hurdle of convincing somebody that you're in pain. Then once you have got them convinced without sounding like a freak because you're just, I'm in pain, then you've got to figure out how to get out of that pain. And then the other stigmas just start piling on. Now you're, you know, now you're a seeker and now we're doing this. And you try to explain to a doctor, you try to explain to somebody, look, I have literally... After 20 years, do you honestly think that I haven't figured out what helps my pain? I mean, after 20 years, you think that I'm stupid? I live with this 24-7. You live with it for 15 minutes once a month. Because I'm telling you, you know? You ever been in a doctor's office and all they do is they come in and 15 minutes later they're gone? And you're like, well, you didn't do anything. You know? And so, that's... A very hard thing is to convince doctors uh, that you're in pain. You can't can't do it, you know? Because like I said, it's all relative too. My eight may be your 25, you know? If I could explain to somebody right now, uh, if you were to be in my body right now, uh, you'd probably be laying on the floor crying. Does that, am I saying, oh, I'm a, you know, I'm a man, take, no, 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 no. There's a certain level that you get used I've to. I've got, yes, I've gotten, I've gotten used to my pain, you know, uh, to a certain degree. 
So, you know, all your little aches and pains and stuff like that, you don't feel them anymore. But again, you know, like in my case, I don't, I don't, I can't get out of it. You know, I've used the, uh, I've used the analogy of I feel like when I go into a doctor and you know they try all these things I feel like I'm just throwing snowballs at tanks you know I it does nothing you know and then you try to explain to them well look this is what I know works this is what will work oh we're gonna try this or we're gonna try that well wait I'm telling you you know I mean I can come into your doctor's office and I can tell you that I want you know your newest commercial 25 minute side effect drug, but I can't come into your office and say, look, I'm legitimately in pain and you're, you know, you know what I mean? So yeah, that's a, that's a sore subject too. So, um, what are some of the, um, I mean, we know that, okay, physical pain, we, we can, we can wrap our heads around that. What are some of the mental emotional fallouts from, Oh. Living with disabilities or living in chronic pain or even because you are permanent considered permanently disabled even by I guess government medical standards What are some of the mental and emotional uh, fallouts from those things horrible? Horrible 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 because again, you know I have to carry around this stigma that if I look like I'm having too good of a time then somebody says how can you be disabled? Well, because I'm having a good time and I'm allowed to have a good time Second thing, the depression. The depression just eats at your brain constantly. It just, you know, like people will say, hey, you want to go do this? Well, I can't, you know, because uh, I can't physically. It's not that I don't want to mentally. It's that I can't physically. All right. Bye. Bye, Angie. <laughs> um, but, you know, uh, the self-esteem issues, you know, uh, guys out there. You know, there's a there's a level of there's a there's a level of masculinity that you want to carry. I can't, cause I, you know, I go out and I I clean my garage and then I'm you know I'm laying on the couch for the next two days, you know. Or my buddies say, you know, like let's go out and do this or do that. I can't, you know. If I was to do something like that, it would kill me, and it, and so it limits your life. Last night, I had to leave a concert because I couldn't stand anymore. I mean, you know, it just adds to that depression. It really does. You go back, to, I went back to the room and cried for like an hour and a half, two hours because, you know, I'm 41 years old and I had to leave a concert. That's just sad. It is. It's just sad. Okay, so what would... Um... I mean, I don't know how long you want to go on yours, but sure. I usually try to keep mine between 20 and 25 minutes. And I think oh, my people know. Yeah. Let's see. My people know that I'll keep going. It's only a bit about. Oh, we're almost 20. Okay. So okay. we're all still okay on time. So what are maybe some things that you would like um, people to know who don't live with disabilities, with chronic pain, or don't live with someone who has those things? What, what would you like them to know? Uh, try to be more understanding of people. Uh, you know, that were so easy to say, hey, how are you doing today? You know, I was told by somebody, when you ask somebody, how are you doing today? Be prepared to find out. <laughs> but nobody's prepared to find out anymore because we want all these little small little snippets. Don't tell me your life, I don't care. But if you don't listen, you can't understand. So I guess I'm an understanding and, you know, a little more compassion. Uh, it's, you know, it's, it's unfortunate that, you know, compassion isn't widely used. <laughs> you guys know on mine that sometimes I can be one of the least compassionate people. But when it comes to serious, you know, uh, my mom was in chronic pain her entire life. And I saw what it did to her. I mean, it, it ruined her. It ruined her as a human being. Uh, and to tell you honestly... 60% of that are the people around you because they really make you feel like shit. They just do. And I would like people to be a little more understanding, ask more questions. You know, I'm willing to answer questions. Are there questions that are inappropriate to ask? No, 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 absolutely not. You have the right to every question you want to ask and I'll answer it. There's no reason not to. 
I mean, you know, yeah. I mean, I guess, yeah, there's, you know, there comes a line where, you know, you just become into the ridiculous question, you know, but at the same time, there's no question that I want to answer. Okay. Um, for somebody maybe who is, um, living with chronic pain or as a, or living with disabilities that maybe doesn't have either someone that they can go to or support system or, or whatever, what would be your... Uh, like your tip or advice or message to them to people that haven't that haven't got anybody right uh, seek somebody out I mean really honestly if you are in chronic pain and you have insurance find out to get a counselor you know find something and I know I'm I'm saying this and I don't have one but I'm currently going to find one you know find somebody find somebody to talk to for 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 I don't know about your guys's censored oh, language. Oh, they know, I swear. Well, I have a... Sorry, hustle to muscle, but I have a really bad mouth, so... And I've been pretty good. You guys know <laughs> that. You guys are all, like... You guys know that I've been really good. Uh, um, I lost my train of thought. Uh, find someone. Oh, find somebody. And, uh, you know, when you do find somebody, keep... You know, like, again, there's Facebook. I mean, you know... I mean, for fuck's sakes, it's Facebook. You have access to millions of people. Find somebody. Find one person, you know? And I know that sounds like, well, I don't have anybody. I'm sure you could find somebody. If you can't find anybody, find me. I'm on Facebook. You can talk to me all you want. I mean, uh, you know, I'm not going to ignore you. Casey, we actually, if you watched the beginning of this video, he did answer how he got Just real his quick, pain. real quick for you, Casey, it was it, it, due to multiple surgeries. Uh, you know, I've had multiple back surgeries, shoulder, elbow, hand, knee, hernias, and so on. So uh, it's basically them, uh, um, it, was, it was from multiple accidents as well. You know, I did fall off a three-story balcony. Uh, you know, I've, I've hurt myself while I was working and and so on but i mean just like really quick snippet that's what that's what led to my you know led led to me now is you know i've got i've got four screws a plate six sutures two cages and a rubber disky thing in my lower back that's the medical term yeah that's the medical <laughs> term between l4 and l5 i've got three anchors and six wires that hold my right shoulder uh, in place here. Um, I've had nerve damage and movement in this elbow because I was losing, uh, I was losing feeling in my hand. Uh, this finger, as you see, is all kind of crinkly. It's supposed to be nice and straight like that one, but it, it's not. It is actually wired and pin backed, so that way I actually have some sort of use. Um, this is from 17-year-old adolescent bullshit of, you know, I'm pissed, I'm gonna punch a wall. <laughs> Yeah, well, wall one. Wall always <laughs> wins every time, but um, so that's 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 kind of a, a quick little thirty thousand foot view of why uh, where my pain severe and almost. He's reading. Comments, okay, so. uh, Audrey, I'm sorry that your family doesn't. Um, doesn't have any more compassion. You're welcome, You're welcome Casey. <laughs> uh, that doesn't have any more compassion. Um, I do. Thank yes. you. Thank you, Eric. I do. So I will, if you want to know what comments um, are going on on Gary's page, I will, for those of you watching HMF Live, you can check out, he's at Gary Morvick, check out his video and you'll see comments right. there as well. Um, I'm sorry that they have, that it seems that they have lost compassion. It's not, I, I would almost say find out if maybe I will tell you, living with somebody, I could see where that would be, like with my depression, could be very exhausting for somebody else. So it may be a time to sit down and find out where everybody is on the, uh, you know, like on what page they're all on, find it, kind of feel out where everybody's at. Um, they may, it may not even be, you know, they may not even be intentionally um, doing something like that. I would find out first um, before, because I know that if I, felt that way that it would make my depression worse and it would just perpetually you know pile on and pile on so right now what I would my best advice for you would be to kind of like stop piling it on for a second and let uh 
let somebody in your family know. Find find somebody that you um, feel you know like the closest and comfortable to, with, and just hey, where 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 are we at? You know, I or or what it is, but don't don't lose don't lose uh, perspective on yourself too. So you know. So those are, I was going yeah. to ask you for tips that you could share with people who are living in that condition. Those are some. <laughs> right. Um, what would you like, uh, I mean, I know you and I have conversations a lot about this, but what would you like maybe those who are helping to support people with chronic pain or disability, what would you like them to know things they could be doing, should be doing or not, or stop doing? Well, I will tell you right now, somebody who has to deal with somebody like me, and I mean, just saying, you're welcome. You're welcome, Audrey. Um, that uh, the dealing with it, it's it's got to be exhausting on you. Um, the strength that comes from her surprises me because I'm pre like Eric said, you have a wonderful wife to stand by your side. And believe me, you know that's the most important thing. But it can be really exhausting because my pain will make me be, I'll go from zero to dick like that because I'm in pain and I don't even notice I'm doing it. So a lot of the times from the other person and it's, gosh, it, you know, chronic pain is almost, a, is almost, it feels like you're being selfish, but you're not, but, but just the compassion and just like the understanding that like, Hey, look, you know, like right now, you know, I really feel like feeling, yeah, I really feel like peeling your face off and eating it like an apple. So just give me a minute, let me go away and compose myself. And then, you know, that kind of understanding that, that, that era of space, you know, that area of space of just saying, okay, you know, I notice this triggers, I notice what's going on. So I'm going to back off for a second or just the understanding and no, Hey, you know what? The person that they lash out on the most they love them the most. I know that sounds so stupid, but it just absolutely is because we feel the most comfortable with them. We feel that we can just let go because we don't have to hide anything. Because when I'm in public, I have to hide a bunch of shit. You know, I can't just blow up at everybody that I see. I'd love to. And you guys know on mine that, you know, most of the time I blow up anyways. This is Gary hiding. Yeah. Imagine if he... <laughs> right, right. But, um, but the people around understanding compassion and know it's going to take time find a common ground there is a common ground there's something you guys can do together to help out the person and believe me the more you help out that person the more you'll start to there, there it go. goes i was trying to reconnect but so that's what yeah so the i guess the last thing oh any last words of wisdom awareness knowledge that you would like to leave folks before i wrap things up on my end uh no just, you know, we're not supposed to be living with this much pain. I mean, we're just not. Uh, <laughs> evolutionarily speaking, we would be taken out from predators in the herd. <laughs> but because of modern science and because of that, you know, um, we, we're still around. So we need to find out and make the best of it. Also, too, you got to figure out a way. I feel like a prisoner in my body. I feel like I'm, I've been imprisoned for, you know, for all of my past, you know, problems and all my past transgressions or whatever you want to call them. And you really got to get over that. So I guess my words of wisdom would be, you know, you're not in prison because you did something wrong. You're just happenstance. It just happened. And so not to make the best of it, because that is a bullshit line. I'm sorry. It just is. I'm not going to make the best of it. I know that sounds kind of counterproductive, but what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to live my days the way I can and the way I have to. Right. Yeah, you're right. Uh, it, it doesn't, you know, mentally I'm still here, you know, but so I guess the words of wisdom is, hey, you know, as cliche as it sounds, stay strong and just, you know, <laughs> thank you, Casey. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I don't want to say this so de so depressing, but, you know, one day it'll be over, <laughs> <laughs> Gosh. you know, so I mean. 
we just wait for our way to wait for our day, you know. Um, a couple things that I will leave you with, especially those of you who might be uh, support systems or responsible for the care of somebody who is in chronic pain or lives with a uh, disability. Uh, thanks, Casey. <laughs> um, so, yes, I, I will say admittedly that it can be very exhausting at times. Um, and if you guys have seen any of our posts, like especially on our personal walls, there've been there's been stretches of being in and out of the hospital with Gary for a number of different reasons. And, um, you know, and I, him and I haven't been together for all of his surgeries. I've come in for probably the latter half of them, maybe. Um, but, you know, recovery time, and there's a lot of things that go along with that. So my, uh, my tips to you that are the support systems, um, well, first of all, if you go back through the archive of HMF Live episodes, I did one on care for the caregiver. And it's so important that you yourself are taking time to take care of your health and your needs. Because if you start to get down and you're sick, you can't help take care of them. And so make sure that you are taking care. I mean, this is Hustle to Muscle Fitness Live. So make sure that you are taking care of your own health and fitness, whether that's just working on eating healthy, foods, whether that's making sure you're going, being active 10, 20, 30 minutes a day. Put your air mask on before trying to exactly. help the Exactly. I others. use the, air, <laughs> the airplane analogy. You need to take care of yourself before you can help somebody else. So get lots of sleep when you can. Um, and, you know, just make sure that you are as well rested, your energy is up. And that's also going to help you be patient during those times that are very aggravating and very exhausting. So, the best thing that you can do to take care of someone else is take care of yourself. And now it's going to look very different depending on the person that you're caring for, what their level of disability is. Like I and Gary, I would say are fortunate enough that he's pretty, he's still well able to take care of himself. I'm functional. Yeah. He, I don't have to take him to the bathroom. I don't, right. you know. I cook for him, he cooks Yet. for me kind of thing, you know, but he's still able to get around and do stuff without me being there all the time, unless it's like a surgery or something. Right. There are people that are taking care of folks who are far more incapacitated, and that's a different situation, but that's when it's going to be more important to have multiple people because you need breaks. Uh, it's so important. Like with Gary and I, there's a little twist of an element because we're married, so some of that is trying to take time for us, but if that's not the case for you, Make sure you have a backup so that way you can get away and take a break, you know, whether it's going to go out and ha have a night out with friends or just a night somewhere else, watch a movie, it's some somewhere to decompress because you need to make sure that you are staying yeah. and refreshed. don't forget and don't forget you as caregivers are healthy. So therefore, you know, you don't feel guilty for going out and having a good time. For you're entitled to the same good time as as anybody else is. So, you know, don't take don't think as like, you know, as you're being, you know, selfish or I, you know, I need a night out. Hey, you know what? Parents, you guys get babysitters, you know? I mean, it's it's I'm not I'm not minimizing people that have disabilities to children, but you are entitled you're for someone. Yeah, you're entitled to have a life as well. He left the you know, concert last I, night. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I left last night. She <laughs> stayed. You know, I mean, I'm not going to be a douchebag and be all like, well, because I'm leaving, you have to leave. Well, no. You know, I have to leave because I'm not feeling well, but you're feeling fine, so stay. So, As people with disabilities, you also have to realize that, too. Yeah, they're, they're, that, that kind of patience, it's as hard as it, as it is for the person living in that situation, there definitely still needs to be some patience going the other way. And don't... You know, I guess that would be a thing for me to say to, as the caregiver to the person who's being cared for, don't, don't add on any guilt to your caregiver, you know, because that's only going to exhaust them more. And you guys are just going to end up in this sort of toxic, like I'm caring for you because I have to kind right. of thing. You don't want that. You know, you want the person to still remain compassionate. And if you're piling guilt on them because they're going out and they're taking a night off, and, you know, I can say I do feel guilty like he doesn't get that break. He always has to live in that condition. But if I'm going to continue to be the one that like, okay, he's in the hospital. I need to make sure that the dogs are okay. I got to get to work. I got to right. make sure the house is still running. And if I'm going to do that, I need to be as mentally clear and fresh and rested as possible. So 
you know, to each other. Don't add on to each other's mental, emotional, physical stress. So, um, I don't, are you going to end yours? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, for those of you watching HMF Live, thank you so much for, for watching this, whether you're doing it now live or if you catch the replay later. Um, as always, I appreciate you guys being on uh, and watching the show. So again, we'll be back next Tuesday, 6.30. I know it was a little late this time. 6.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, and we'll see what next week's uh, episode's all about. So make sure you go out and have a, a great week and a happy, healthy night. Bye. Bye, guys. All right. So.